What's up? This is Richie from the Where We Wild YouTube channel, and today I got a Shimano Cardiff 401A. Pretty awesome budget swim bait reel. I love this thing, man. This is a great, great dependable reel for the money, I'll tell you that. I'm going to be tearing it apart, adding my usual assortment of oil and grease, get it running nice and smooth. I might even upgrade this handle to a Gomexis power handle. I think it might be pretty sick on this reel. So if you're at home trying to take your reel apart, you can follow along and hopefully it'll help you out. Let's get into it. All right, let's do this, man. First and foremost, we got a little flathead or a Phillips head. I like the flathead little screw out here just on the handle. We want to get that off. Takes the little front cover off this thing so we can loosen this nut up. Place that over here. And we're going to take a 10 millimeter wrench. We're going to be going clockwise. I believe, is it clockwise or counterclockwise on this bad boy? I don't remember. Clockwise. To the right. Take that nut off. Handle comes up. Got a little bit of a washer behind here. It's a uh, little, I'm not sure if it's called a washer, but it's a little, little spring spacer type washer. And we're just going to unscrew this. I'm going to hold the spool down so I can turn this thing and get it get it going off. I'm going to be turning it to the right clockwise. Get that off. Now if I end up putting this power handle on at the end, you're going to have to go back and just go in reverse and see how to put this handle back on, but you know, it's pretty simple. Shouldn't give you much of a problem. Underneath that, it looks like we got three washers here. Four, four washers. And they're kind of in the opposite direction of each other. You can see there's like a little bit of space here. There's two that are facing the same way and two that are facing opposite. So it's like kind of like parentheses, if that makes sense. We're just gonna keep those in the same order of which we found them. I'm just working my way down here. If you can see that. Next up, I guess we can take this tension knob off going to be loosening it to the left, I believe, counterclockwise. There we go. And then we run into our first bearing here. We can pop this thing out real fast, give it a little oil. I'm going to use my bearing remover tool. I will link everything in the description as usual, the mat, the grease, the oil, all the tools I'm using. So if you need to pick some of this stuff up for yourself, you can uh, go ahead and grab that. Oh, that's right. I got to pop this little spring out first, don't I? There's a little bit of a spring tension clip in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. And there's a little break in, in one end of it. So you're just going to find that break, go right off to the side, hover your thumb over it so, so it doesn't go flying on you, and just pry that out of there, just like that. Actually, you know, I might not be able to get this out. Let's backtrack a little bit. Let's get this cover off here. You're going to need a bigger screwdriver for this, flathead. These reels actually come with a little tool that helps you get these off, which I think is really, uh, really sweet. Just basically busting those loose and then there's grip on the side of them so you can use your, your fingers. And you're just basically pulling these out as far as they can go. They're attached so they won't pull completely out. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take my little bearing remover. You can. It sits right on top of that pinion gear you can see down in there. It's pretty early in the morning right now, so my brain might not be completely awake yet. Need more coffee, I think, dude. So just dropping a little bit of oil in there. It's pretty sick how they got these open bearings on this reel. Old school, dude. There's no cover on them, so you can see all those little ball bearings in there. It's pretty sick. Feels good. And we'll just fire that back in there. Make sure it's pressed all the way down. 
the paper towel. Got a little oil on me. And then we'll just throw this little spring clip back in there. I'm basically just gonna use my fingernail. I'm just gonna start with one side, get it pressed in. And just kind of squeeze it. Oop, it's stuck in my fingernail. Squeeze it into place. Might need a little bit of a flathead screwdriver or something to do this, but usually I can get it going with just my uh, fingernail. Now you just want to make sure it's lined up in there. It's not completely right the way I have it right now. Just need a little bit of uh, finagle. Oop. There we go. And you just want to make sure it's pressed down on all sides. Everything's tucked in, and I'll keep that bearing in there for you. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what's going on. So let's pull this spool out. I see another bearing right here. Now to take that bearing off, if you need to replace it, you're gonna need a special tool like this one or a pair of uh, special pliers, in which case you're gonna to have to line this thing up with that pin that sits there and just, just kind of push that pin through with one of these tools. You gotta to line this thing up and then you just slowly screw this in and it pushes that pin through. I'm not gonna mess with that right now because there's no need. I'm just gonna drop a little bit of oil on that bearing and call her a day. I'll just leave that up here somewhere. Just to soak. All right, now down inside here, you got another bearing all the way down in there. And I'm just gonna make sure there's no grease or anything like that inside that bearing. Just gonna wipe it. There is a little bit of grease. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see down in there, but there's a few gears down in there. And they're made of plastic, not metal, but you can totally hit them with a tiny bit of blue grease if you want, and we can. But first and foremost, I'm just making sure that bearing's nice and clean. And then I'm gonna drop if you can see that, a tiny little bit of oil right down in that bottom bearing there. Now, usually I wait till the end to break out the blue grease, but we can hit some real fast just to show you where you're gonna hit it. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. It already has a good amount on here, so just to show you, it's just those gears down in there, and you can just tap the tiniest little bit down in there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I'm sorry, but just the tiniest little bit on those gears down there. Nothing crazy whatsoever. All right, that's all good. And then on the back here, you got your worm gear and your line guide and all that stuff. So I'm just going to move this gear a little bit to rotate that and get that off to the side. And then there's this little paw cap here, and it is a flathead. Where did I just put that? There we go. Now you want to be gentle with this thing because it's made of plastic and it will break on you. But just to get to that little line guide here, I'm just going to go real gentle, counterclockwise, get this paw cap off. Underneath there will be a tiny little washer, and then you'll have your, your line guide. Let me uh, get these tweezers here. There we go, knock that right off. On the inside of this thing, you can see there's actually two little baby washers. You're never gonna be able to see it, but on your reel, in your hand, you probably will spot it. So just be aware they're in there. They're kind of sticking, because there's oil. So that's cool, we'll just leave them in there for now. And then we're just gonna pull out this tiny little, if I can get it. Here it is. Little line guide here. And we're just gonna clean any grease off. There's a little bit of, hard to explain on this thing and it's tiny, so I'm sorry if you can't see it. I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip. There's like little shoulders on this thing and sometimes that can build up a lot of crap on, on that little area. So you just wanna wipe that off there. And this thing, you know, it just runs up and down the worm gear and it, uh, it guides your line and, you know, it um, helps, you know, distribute the line evenly on the spool as it goes back and forth. So 
if this thing's out of whack, you'll notice that when you reel in or you spool up a reel, it'll be a big pile on this side and low on this side or vice versa or it might get too high just in one spot or whatever. So you gotta make sure this thing's running uh, right so that way it distributes the line equally. So, woo, slippery. Just gonna clean that up a little bit. Throw it back in. And sometimes these can be a little tricky because you need them to line up with those gears. So you want to make sure that thing falls in all the way, just like that. We're going to put a tiny little drop of oil inside there. And I always just throw a little extra oil right onto the worm gear as well. And then we're gonna get this cap on here with those two little washers. Uh, if you know, if you want, we can we can take these off. My hands are getting a little slippery for this maneuver. I might might lose them. Might lose them. Yeah, right there. Tiny little buggers, dude. So just be careful with them. But they're gonna sit right on top of that. Ooh. Stay still, baby. Lay it in right there. And then we're just gonna gently put on this paw cap and it is a very, very light plastic. So just be very careful. Do not over tighten this thing at all. Just line it up. I'm putting zero pressure. I'm, it's the weight of the screwdriver, that's it. That's it, man. Second it starts to tighten up, you're done. Do not over tighten that. All right, so this is all good here, this, this whole piece. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the issue here. We got all the gears, everything going on, all in this side of the reel. Pretty sick, huh? Just all tucked into this piece right here. So we got what looks to be like five screws on this thing. One holds this little block in place on the inside. Uh, two of them could probably get this cover off. And I'm going to guess it's the, it's been a while, man, since I took apart this reel. I'm going to guess that they're the two top ones here, but let's just, uh, let's just see what happens and we'll, uh, we'll take our time with it. I'm going to go with a flathead screwdriver. You can use either or I just prefer the flathead and we're going to start with this one screw here right next to the Shimano lettering. I just do not remember which ones need to come off this thing, so just bear with me. And I'm thinking I can get it off with just these top two. There's one. Yeah, that's definitely a good one. And let's go directly right across it to the other top one. Both the same size. There you go. So you can see now that I got this off, this screw holds in this black piece right here. These two hold on this cover over here. I don't really see any need to take those off unless you're trying to replace the one-way bearing maybe but other than that man I think uh, you can leave those alone especially for this type of job right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out this roller clutch inner tube just like that lay that off to the side I'm gonna give a nice clean q-tip wipe to the inside of this one-way roller bearing you just want to make sure that's clean. You don't have to oil or grease it or anything like that. Just make sure it's clean. All right. We already did that bearing, if you remember. Everything else is uh, looking pretty cool. I'm just going to clean off any old grease, anything like that. Any junk that's inside this cover here. 
Looking pretty good though. A little blowout. Make sure there's no sand, any junk, anything like that. We're just going to place that off to the side and focus in on this stuff. All right, what do we got here? Get this out of my way. Just put that there, put that spool there. All right, so what do we got? First and foremost here, we got these two springs. Here, I'll lift it up a little bit so you can see better. I'm gonna take those springs out, that way they don't go flying. And then we can slowly pull up on this main gear, I suppose. Slide it straight up. Lay that off to the side. There should be another drag washer underneath there. Ooh, that's a little tiny baby. Tiny baby drag washer. Place that there. The rest of those drag systems inside the main gear right there. And then you got these little pieces, which is weird here. It's like the ratchet, and then there's like, I don't know what this piece is called, but they come up together. This just sits on this black post, and it hooks up to that ratchet, and they kind of go on and off as one piece. So we'll deal with that later. And we can pull up on the pinion gear, get that out of there. And now we're pretty much bare bones here. I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit. Get any gunk off, some extra grease and stuff laying around. Get rid of that nonsense. This reel's pretty clean, man. It's nothing, uh, kind of has some fresh looking grease on there. Not seeing anything too nuts, but I'm just gonna, a little wipe here and there. Might even take a little bit of a toothpick just to help me really dial in and get some crap that I won't be able to get otherwise. It's a good tool to have, man. These little toothpicks, they help you. Not bad, man. Not looking bad at all. Let's wipe this stuff off. So let's remember how this thing came off and it was like this. This little piece sat on this black little spot here this came in keyed over on this thing so let's keep this stuff right side up so we remember you can always take pictures and stuff like that man but if you're paying close attention just rem remember how things go together what faces up stuff like that all right so there's a flat side and a more rounded side to this i don't know if it'll show up on camera but you'll definitely notice it in your hand and the flat side was facing up so let's make a note of that. Just leave that right how it came off. And we got a little drag washer here that sat on the bottom of the main gear and sat right on top of that right there. Inside this main gear, we're going to bust this all off, build it out. Over here, this would be the entire drag system. So first and foremost, you got one washer here, then a drag washer, carbon fiber. I upgraded these, I forgot. I put carbon fiber drags in here, I'm pretty sure of it. Beefed up that, that max drag a bit. So yours might look a little different. I don't remember, I seriously doubt this thing came stock with, with carbon fiber. So I must have upgraded it and forgot. It's been a while, dude. I got a lot of reels, a lot of balls in the air with these reels. So I'm just pulling out all the drag washers, but the amount of drag washers that you should see will be the same. So whether they're carbon fiber or a felt or whatever you got, same story here. We're just taking them all out, lining them up in the order of which we found them. Little wipe out. Checking the main gear for any damage, any, any cracks, any chipped teeth. This thing looks beautiful. Just gonna add some fresh grease to it when we're done with the drag. Looking pretty good though. So now we're gonna bust out our drag grease. Cow's Universal Reel and Star Drag Grease and that's made just for these drag washers. It's very sticky. It's not like the blue grease. And we're just gonna add the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest 
little layer to each drag washer. And basically what this does is it, it just preserves the life of the drag washers. If you run them completely dry, you get max drag, even though you never really need your max drag, do you? Even on a big swim bait reel like this, I mean, you lock it down and it's, it's, you're pretty good. But you know, having that little bit of a lubrication there, man, keeps them from burning up. So they'll last you much longer. Tiny, tiny, thin coating where you barely see it. It just makes the washer shiny. That's all you want. First one, pop that in there. Then we got this metal right in on top of it. A little more grease. Tiny, 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 thin little coating. Just work it into that carbon fiber or felt or whatever washers you're dealing with. Two. And you got like an eared washer here that lines up, oops, with the holes of this gear. Sits that perfect right in there. One more washer. Nice little thin coating, beautiful. That's it for the drag grease. And then you got your one more washer right there. All right, main gear, ready to rock and roll, drag system done. We're gonna add a little bit of grease to this real fast. And you just keep all those drag washers in place, just kind of squeeze it together. I probably should have, I could have added this on before I messed with the drag, but whatever. I'm just gonna keep them squeezed in place. Just tapping some on here. We're gonna do like 50, 60% of the gear. Don't want to overdo it. Shares it with the pinion. You don't want to get it too messy. But what I'm doing is I'm just tapping it on and I'm just going to take my finger and swipe it across just to seat that grease down into the teeth. Maybe just the tiniest little bit more on the opposite side. Tiny main gear, man. It's just crazy. Tiny main gear. Swipe. Seat that all in there. Good enough. That will spread as the reel rotates. Keep those washers in place, we're good. Next up is our pinion gear and yoke. Just gonna give that a bit of a clean off here. Wipe off any old dirty grease. Now if yours is like really, really gnarly, you can bust out a toothbrush or a, you know, uh, toothpick or whatever you got to do just to get inside those gears make your life a little easier get it get it really clean you can use like certain products like real clean or like soak these things overnight stuff like that but this thing's uh not bad at all so just inspecting it for any damage make sure there's no breaks in the teeth anything like that any cracks it's looking pretty good might even send a little air up through it. Make sure there's nothing inside. That's pretty good. Wipe off this yoke. A little bit of some old gnarly grease. Not so bad though. All right, we're gonna load this up with some fresh. Where's my brush? Oh, kept it right in there. All right. A little bit on these teeth right here. Nothing crazy. Cool. A little bit on the yoke. Nice little glaze. Don't have to go insane. All right, now, if you're wondering if this thing's upside down or not, the way you tell is there's two ramps. Let's see if I can point them out to you. I gotta put this down. There's two ramps on each side here. One's here and one's here. And this thing needs to fit them 
perfectly. And if it doesn't line up, it's upside down. So you'll see when you put this thing down on this post and it slides down, it'll fit perfect here and here, just like that. So if it's upside down, it's just, it's just not gonna fly. The other way you can tell is there is a more, and a big indentation here on this little half circle and that faces up. And so that is where that painting sits. Real fast, if you need to, you can add a little bit of grease. This one's got a, a good amount on there. You know what, there might be a bearing real fast. I'm not gonna take it off because these little C clips and E clips are a pain in the butt. But there could be one more bearing sitting right here on the bottom of this. So I'm just gonna add the tiniest little bit of oil to the bottom of this shaft. And let any oil soak down in there if there is a bearing. I don't remember if there is or not, but it seems like it uh, it very well could be one in there. So a little oil there. Then back to the grease. I'm going to just add a tiny little bit here and there on this lever, a little bit on these springs. Just want to be careful, gentle. A little bit here and there where this slides back and forth. But keep it neat, you know what I mean? Keep it clean. Don't gunk it all up. You just add an unnecessary weight to your reel when you do that. It's really no need for it. All right, pretty cool. A little bit on these posts here. Nothing crazy. Just where this yoke is going to slide up and down on. And then we'll throw our pinion back in, scoop up with the yoke. And we're just going to place it right down on these posts here and slide that pinion right down in there. And then we got this little area here. Oh, you know what? I didn't hit that little baby drag washer with the uh, drag grease, did I? Tiniest little bit. Tiny little coating. Should be fine. I'll put that on later. All right, let's try to seat this thing back down. These things are kind of a pain because it's gonna have to go on together. Remember, flat side up, and you just kind of stick that thing right in there. You know what, we can put the tiniest, 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 tiniest little bit of grease around this little black post too. Nothing crazy. Very, very tiny. Let's slide this thing on together. We're just gonna eyeball it. See how this thing is like keyed. So you just wanna try to anticipate where it's gonna land. You just slowly spread it down, slide it down. And make sure that that piece sits. Just like that, perfect. I don't know if that's actually keyed, but let's see if it works. So you go one way, it's basically your anti-reverse. When you come back, it catches it, and it can't go that way. Seems to be working well. And we'll just throw in our little drag washer there. Center that bad boy up. And then we're going to slide on our main gear with our whole drag system. It's a little bit keyed, just to make sure everything's centered. And we're just gonna slide this on down. We might have to slide that pinion gear out of the way. Just support all these washers. See if I can give you a little bit better of a view here. To kind of support everything. Let that gear fall down. Knock it next to the pinion. And then you got all these drag washers, which I guess, you know, might have to do it one by one here. I was hoping to slide them all at the same time, but it doesn't seem to want to happen. Just remember the order. See, they're all like keyed, you know what I'm saying? And then you got those. There we go. Now I got you. Now I got you, son. 
but you just gotta make sure that little ear washer falls right into place there and everything sits flush. Very nice, very nice. See how these gears are gonna share that grease as it spins? Good stuff. All right, man, we're good, dude. We're almost done. It's a pretty simple reel. All right, we're gonna wipe off our roller clutch inner tube here. And this thing has two teeth on it and it's gonna sit perfect right into that top washer here. Got to make sure it's sitting completely flush and just rotate it until those teeth fit perfect down in there. You'll see it. It's very, very obvious when it slides in there correctly. All right, we're good, dude. Just got to throw these springs back on, on these posts. Don't forget about them. Very easy to forget about them. <sighs> a little breath. Take a little breath. Look around. Everything's in place, everything's oiled, everything's greased, looking good. I think we're good. Let's throw this cover back on. And now we're just basically going to try to line up these two screw holes with these two gold areas here. And just kind of anticipate where those are going to land. And just slowly start to lay this thing down. A little twist here and there. There we go. You'll know. There it is. Nice little snap. Beautiful. My hands are completely covered in grease and oil, so this should be fun trying to center these screws. <laughs> oh boy. I wish my magnet I wish these screws were magnetized. That would really, really help me. I'm gonna have to bust out the old grease trick. Ah, all right. Let's get cute. Let's get cute. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a Phillips head screwdriver just for a moment. Find the one that fits these. That might do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip the screwdriver into some grease, creating a glue. A little bit of sticky something something and then I'm going to stick that right on to the screwdriver like that and it helps me hold that screw in place. Get that started. Ha -ha. Tricks of the trade son. A little bit of grease. Sticker on. Make sure that's centered. Gotcha. Back to the Phillips head, I'm sorry, back to the flat head, which I just prefer to tighten things up with. Keep that pushed down, nice and centered. I could have kept the flat, uh, Phillips head, probably. But. All right, tight is tight. Tight is tight. We're good. Whew. All right. We are just about there. What else? Let's get this thing back together. We already put our grease and oil down in there. We already did the worm gear line guide. We are rolling, rolling. Let's get this tension knob back on. Actually, we can we can put this all together first. Let's slide this down in here. You can put a tiny, 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 tiny bit of grease on these gears here. Not a lot at all. Just a little tiny baby coating. It's good enough. Slide this down in. To line up nice. Beautiful. 
All right, now, if I remember correctly, this is a little tricky here. When you're putting this thing back on, here, you know what, we can put the tension on back in, I believe. Or actually, you know what, maybe it'll help us line up without it. When you're putting this thing back on, if I remember correctly, this button needs to be in the up position, not down. Keep it up as you're putting it on. I, if I remember correctly, I think that is a big deal with this reel. Or it like won't work. Now we're just gonna line this up. That shaft's gonna come right up through there. I'm keeping pressure on that. Come on, babe. Don't force it, you know. But you want that you want that to click in there nice. Just take your time with it. Just basically lining up all those holes. There's like little pins and pegs in there. Hmm. Why is it being such a pain in the butt? So you something, man. When you're running smooth, running nice and smooth, and you run into some issues. What's the problem here? The spool sitting down in there, nice. There we go. Is that better? I still don't like how this thing's on. That's nice. That's nice. But there's a little bit of a little bit of uh, space there. I don't know why. Hmm. Well, stay tuned. Bear with me, folks. Let's see if we can get this cover back on now. There we go. That's looking a little better. All right, I think the trouble was, yeah, that's better. I think the trouble was that I didn't have those screws completely tight on the underside of it. These right here, this one and this one. I think that there was a little bit of play and space left and that was just causing it to sit a little higher than it was supposed to. So if you have trouble getting your case back on, look for that. Make sure those screws are completely tight. I had to just kind of loosen these up one more time and really push down on that cover and and then tighten those screws back up. That's what was causing it. Now you see it is just completely seamless all the way around and that's what I'm looking for. Jeez, I couldn't figure out why that thing wouldn't want to go on, man. That was really starting to annoy me, but we're good, we got it. All right, now, last but not least, let's get this handle on and I'm probably gonna upgrade it to this Gomexis power handle because it's pretty sick. This is 120 millimeter. I believe it's a 7.4 size fitting. Sorry, seven times four millimeter size fitting. And so we're just gonna throw these washers back on. Now, if you're just putting your stock handle back on, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty much the same deal. You're just gonna get these washers on. We're gonna put this drag star on and that should be turning to the left counterclockwise. And just kind of hold the spool a little bit. 
that on there straight yeah looks pretty good tighten that down and now if you're putting the stock handle back on you remember how that goes right just had this little bit of a spacer washer here then you had your handle nut and then you just put on your little you know lock it into place with that little piece but this time i'm going to go with the upgraded handle here and i'm basically just sliding that bad boy right on there i don't know if i'm going to need any washers or whatnot for this but i have some pieces for it a little cap now i've done one of these before and at first i, I kept washers on it and it fell off on me so this time i'm not going to use any washers I'm just going to go straight with the cap. There's an L on the inside of this, which means left-handed. So let's see if I can get this thing on straight. Nice. Sweet. Tension knob is just cranked. Very cool. All right, so there you go, man. That is game over right there. That's how easy it is to put one of those handles on. Pretty sweet, tightened up nice. I'm just gonna make sure it's just completely tightened up. Nice. Sweet. These are pretty sweet, man. These handles. Just gonna put a tiny little oil on it. They got bearings in them. That's cool. Just give you a little more crank. You know, these, these stock Cardiff handles, they're not very big for the real. You know what I mean? Like, look at that. That's pretty crazy, dude. And especially a guy like me, I got really big hands. You know, I want some bigger handles here. So if you're putting your stock handle back on, you remember how to do that. Very, very simple. You can always go back to the beginning of the video, but if you're trying to make a uh, upgrade here with one of these Gomexis handles, that's how you do that. All right, so there you have it, man. That is taking apart and tuning up the Shimano Cardiff 401A and doing a little bonus handle upgrade on it. I will link this handle in the video description along with everything else that I'm using here, the mat, the tools, the oil, the grease, everything I can find, all this stuff I'm using. So if you need some of that stuff, you can go pick it up for yourself. But yeah, man, pretty simple reel. It has its little, little kind of finicky parts, like getting that cover on is really the, the worst part. You gotta make sure all those screws are right. And then when you go to slide that thing back on, this thing, that button's gotta be in the up position or it's just not gonna work for you. But other than that, pretty simple reel. I love how it feels with this 120 millimeter on there. Man, it's gonna be really sweet to throw some big swim baits on. But yeah, dude, feels good. And the more you work it, it's just gonna get smoother and smoother and smoother. And it feels awesome, dude. It feels really, really smooth. I'm loving it. it feels great. So. There you go. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're into this sort of thing, don't forget to hit subscribe. We put a new video out every single week. And definitely check out our Shimano Reels playlist. I got a lot of these videos up on the channel. Big collection of Shimano Reels. I'm always taking them apart and stuff. So I hope those videos help you out as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Later. Pretty sick, man. Pretty sick. I dig it. If you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to check out the rest of the Where We Wild YouTube channel, where we post a brand new video every week. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever we post a new adventure. Thanks for watching. See ya.